You don't need me to tell you that football is huge here in the UK. And not just here, but all over the world. We all know of teams like Liverpool, Chelsea and Arsenal and the magic of the Premier League. But that only scratches the surface of football played professionally in the UK. The English football pyramid consists of nine tiers. The top four being League Two, League One, Championship and Premier League. They're all league football. And the five leagues below it are non-league football. COVID-19 has had a huge effect on all football clubs, but especially the smaller teams that rely on match day revenue. Now, don't get non-league football confused with Sunday League. Non-league football has a ground, fans, sponsors, uh, and a youth setup, which is where I got my start playing football when I was young, which brings me to my connection to non-league football. I was born in Rio in Brazil to Brazilian mom and Greek dad. Brazil being the most football-loving country in the world and my dad playing football in his youth, I was bound to be football mad from young. After moving to the UK at a young age, I wanted to play football as soon as I could and the only football available to me in the area was Kings Langley FC. Kings Langley is a village community in North Watford, uh, just outside of London. Their senior team plays in the seventh tier of English football. The seventh tier is the highest tier of football allowed. Uh, with fans because of COVID-19. So with fans not being allowed in the stadium anymore, I thought it would be nice to go check out a game where you can watch fans in the seventh tier with Kings Langley FC, to revisit them, see how they're doing, and also to see what a match day experience is like in non-league football. So what, what do you what do you enjoy what's about coming to Kings Langley Football Club? The, the best thing about Kings Langley really is it's uh, it's in a small it's sort of a small little tight knit community. Yeah. It cost me a hundred and about hundred pounds for time for a season ticket here. Whereas my seat at Spurs would now cost about one and a half thousand pounds. I've known, I know the chairman, the directors and such. It's a really nice club, like they've really welcomed me, my guide dog Sid, who's been uh, Really welcome to you with open arms. How was training and how was how was all of that handled really? Especially with the age groups that we deal with and non-competitive, you know, you've got players who may have only been playing football for a few months and suddenly it's all taken away from them. So those first couple of months were really difficult and myself and others at the club, Darren and, and the whole youth committee were really determined to get the kids playing football as soon as possible, but also balancing out and making sure it's safe. So that was really important. And uh, yeah, we were able to get, get playing again in the summer and I think a lot of players you know, really got benefit from being back out and you know, amongst their friends and in a nice environment where they could actually you know, run around and have a bit of fun and maybe take their mind off all the challenges they've done. Being a manager at a non-league side compared to maybe being a, 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 a bigger team, do you maybe get more close connection with the players and the fans? Um, I mean, I know a lot of the players here, to be honest with you. So obviously my background is professional football for about 22 years. Um, biggest difference will obviously be budgets, um, staff, you know, analysis and things like that. And obviously the training times you get with players. Obviously we only get them twice a week, so you have to try and get in as much information as you can. The lads we have are very professional. They've kind of bought into what we're doing. But as I say, the biggest thing is the budgets and, and I suppose the amount of staff that you have. What was COVID like been for you players in terms of training and, and meeting up, staying together with the squad? Mm, it was hard when we didn't get to see the boys for a while and then um, got back into it. So everybody's still trying to get fighting fit because it was hard. I had a long, long while off. How did you like stay fit and stuff during that time? I mean, probably the wrong one to ask. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, during lockdown, probably was a little bit easier to stay fit because that's the only thing you can do in the daytime just to get out. So you probably do it more than you usually do. But it's a different kind of fitness. You can only run. You can't get as sharp as when you're training every day with the boys. Or, so it's just a different type of fitness. With lockdown 2.0 coming into effect, non-league footballers had to take a break. So when it comes back, your local club will need your support more than ever. If making this doc has taught me anything, it's that, that there can't be the Liverpools and the Man U's without the Kings Langley's. Football at the highest level starts on these pitches with players like Jamie Vardy and Ian Wright getting their start at non-league clubs. So when it comes back, I urge you to go and see your local non-league team just to see what grassroots football is really like. And who knows, you might have a new favourite team.